Hello and welcome back. This is Franz Cantor, a cartoonist, illustrator, movie watcher, pop culture enthusiast, you name it. Um, today we're drawing, I'm actually drawing, it's up to you. I would encourage you to draw along with me. That would be fantastic. But uh, today we're drawing, um, I did a little thumbnail. I wonder if you can guess who that is from that. I've transferred the thumbnail over to the uh, page as well. So it's trying to, um, I kind of like this, I really like the thumbnail the shape here. So maybe I can um, use it uh, a little bit closer. All right, so who we're doing today? No, we're not doing the thing. We're doing this guy, Robin Williams. So you can see he's got a, a face made for caricature. Why? Because he's got a, his features are very pronounced, right? So he's got very expressive eyes, very expressive uh, eyebrows. His uh, head is extremely, it's another shape again. I've actually taken a bit of license and drawn this sort of a, a bean type of shape. That's just the impression that I get, yeah. Very pronounced nose, uh, tight lips. His face is quite muscular and the amount of, um, of uh, lines in his face are, are less pronounced because I think um, this this uh, photograph is actually from his like mid career probably um, um, you know Aladdin that era. So I've got a list of films that actually we could sort of talk about while we uh, while I draw him uh, and which films that you might uh, respond more to. Um, my daughter's favorite, uh, my middle daughter's favorite film of uh, Robin Williams is Hook, and I do love Hook. Hook is a great film. He plays Peter Han uh, Pan in uh, in Hook. Um, there's also Aladdin, of course, which is kind of like everybody talks about Aladdin. Um, his performance is, you know, a a outstanding. I mean, it's the, really the selling point for the film. He's a very sensitive, he was a very passed away now a couple of years ago, unfortunately. Um, so we miss him a lot. He's, uh, he was a great energetic uh, character actor. And my favorite uh, film of his is actually um, Mrs. Doubtfire. So I do like his performance in Aladdin. Um, but I think Mrs. Doubtfire is a really standalone performance. I quite like that. So the shape I'm trying to aim for here is very simplified, okay? So it's like a kidney bean type of effect. Now why why a kidney bean if his head is sort of a block? It's because I get an impression of the face muscles pushing and pulling, right? So it, it kind of reminds me a bit of Popeye's face. And he did play Popeye, I realize that. I haven't seen Popeye, to my shame. Um, I must, uh, I must watch that because I, 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 I remember being a big Popeye fan as a kid. I loved that uh, show because it was so um, crazy and and energetic. The, the cartoons. So you can watch a lot of those on um, <clears throat> YouTube now. Those 1930s Flesher cartoons. Flesher Studios produce a lot of the uh, Popeye cartoons, which are fantastic. There's lovely lights in side lights here in um, the reference shot, the reference photograph. And uh, it's really well, as a portrait shot, it's really well, um, it's really well lit. So... In the spirit of caricature, what is caricature? Caricature is exaggeration and simplification. For me at least, you know, I mean, other artists can explain the process in, you know, different ways, surely. But um, 
I guess what you know it comes down to is what you're most aware of in the actual process itself. And I am aware of simplification. As I said, I've created this shape here, which I'm conforming all of the details to. So this kidney bean. I've also got, um, very quick, I will explain this um, concept. There's a light source which is coming down from the top right hand corner. And all of the elements in the face are shaded with that respect, right? But there's also a, a rim light or a side light coming up in the opposite direction, lighting from below, from the, from the left-hand side. So what that does is gives you more of a three-dimensional um, feeling for the uh, two-dimensional object, the two-dimensional drawing. Okay, so that's what we're uh, that's what we're, we're aiming for. Now, with caricature, everything is not um, relative. Uh, everything, no, that's not true. Everything is kind of relative, uh, but most particular this area, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So this area here is your area of focus. Okay. This is where you put the most of your effort in, your most of your work in, because that's like a T-zone. That mask area is, the, is the, the elements that we recognize the most in the face. So the relationships, not necessarily the proportion. So it might seem a little bit odd to say that, but what's the difference between proportion and the... Um, and the relevance of the, you know, if you ignore proportion, don't you immediately ignore the likeness? Because, you know, after all, are we trying to achieve a likeness in this portrait, in this caricature? And it's, yes, we are. We're trying to achieve a, 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 a likeness, but we're trying to achieve a likeness with regard to the... Um, with regards to the novelty or the game that we supply, that we play for the face, for, for um, telling the story of the face. So it's a matter of um, playing the game and understanding a little bit of the rules, but don't let it get in the way of, of your enjoyment of the process. So the whole thing is if we can have a little bit of fun with drawing Robin's face, right, it's more important than the end result. If the end result, if he looks like Robin, that's fantastic. Well done. But, you know, if it doesn't, and we've still learnt a lot about the process, that's also very good. So I'm using a brown pencil, a little stub left, but uh, this is a... Uh, Prismacolor Terracotta, which is a reddy brown color. And the Strathmore toned paper is quite thick in pad forms. Pad form. It's also a white pencil we're going to be using, which is also Prismacolor. And then to make it a little bit harder to understand, we're going to use a different pencil, which is a Polychroma, which is a little bit harder, a little bit waxier. Um, than these two pencils. Prisma colors are very soft, like, you know, Derwent's, I suppose. So um, that's what we're going to be using to create this, uh, this caricature. So when you're working in that T-zone, that mask area, right, you have to be aware of relative proportions. So the proportions you're changing in reference to, you know, have the caricature, you're doing a caricature. So you're exaggerating a lot of the shapes, right? But you're also simplifying, you're, you're stylizing to a certain extent other things. So you're getting really down to a, a process of uh, analysis that is partly organic, it just it unfolds as you, as you draw, right? Um, 
So it's not as conscious as I, I, I would like it to be, perhaps, but, um, you know, it's still very, um, it's still very much uh, a game. Okay, so here we go. How far are we getting away from the pencil sketch? So... The idea is uh, like the I'm putting in the details of the face that I can see, right? And I'm aware that I'm changing their their position slightly, but it's in it's in relevance. So it's I'm, I'm relating it to these this mask area. So the two eyes and the nose and the mouth, right? The recognition there is built up with the details. Now I, I recognize that I've push the proportions slightly so that I can get a, a, a hum more humorous effect, I suppose. But um, ultimately, that recognition has to be there, or should be there. Let me put my glasses on. It might be worth having a uh, sharper image to, to work from. The other thing, too, lining things up, you know, with perspective and... Um, their linear positions in the uh, reference. So look back and forth to the photograph, to the to the reference, um, constantly. If you're working from life drawing, for example, try to keep the paper at the same angle as the as the model. So if it's up on your knee or on an easel or something, you know it's the same process. So the closer the the um, image you're studying to the end result, the better. So caricature is a matter of distortion of um, exaggeration. So some things you make big, like the nose, the, the, the cheeks. It's a very muscular cheek, by the way. I've actually simplified it even more but he has a face full of muscles. So the muscles indicate, you know, his energy that he puts into smiling. There's kind of a nervousness in his expression, a little bit of self-doubt perhaps. We all experience that, but it creates certain effects um, in your expression. And those are here. Funny enough, you know, in some of his, uh, in Aladdin, for example, um, those expressions, those very self-same expressions that are part of his, you know, humanity, the bittersweet uh, expression is in, in um, the genie. It's in the genie. You can see it drawn there. So... You know, it, I'm not saying anything new. It's what I'm trying to say. There is sadness in this face. There is a striving for excellence. There's all, all of this is muscular, right? So it's even the tight lips. It's just so um, pent up energy, ready to explode. And when he does. You know, it's an extraordinary thing to to view. His, um, you know, his films are, are like a, a testament to really what somebody of that caliber, that that uh, level of genius, can make out of out of these seemingly um, pedestrian roles. Like, uh, you know, like Tutsi was. Um, Dustin Hoffman's film. I quite like that too. But Mrs. Doubtfire really um, it was a very, you know, his personality, his feelings really came out with that character. So you could really tell that was a it's a nice um, experience when they can 
reach out through the character and, and make you feel make you feel good, you know, make you feel humanity, sort of empathy, empathize with the sadness or with the with the story. Of course with the with the character delivering the story. Some lovely um, sharp notes with the highlights that are coming back the with the um, side lights so I'm going to try to capture some of those as well there's a lot of um, not a lot of wrinkles on his face as I said to you before it's uh, quite muscular right so um, it's in repose here but it's in repose not for very long I suspect it's something that I think um, you know you can get a f you feel that it's about anything could happen at any second right it could explode into character and it's probably partly um, a sense of uh, maybe shyness or nervousness you know sometimes shy people overcompensate by being very, very outgoing and exuberant. So it could have something to do with that. There's a little bit of um, no, little bit of shyness. You can tell in this uh, in this, this expression, this face. But um, it's very muscular. It's very, very muscular. So the it gets a lot of work of this face. These. Um, Muscles, the lines, because they're not wrinkles. They're just, they're just, they're just muscles that create furrows and and hills and valleys. So he's a very interesting character to draw, from that point of view. You know, there's a lot of s simple shapes. As I said, we started with a bean, uh, basically. So. Um, you know that's that makes the task a little bit more interesting uh, a little bit easier perhaps but um, now there's a challenge to get variety within that shape and when I say variety now I mean the details but the relevant amount of details and the details have to make some form of sense okay so you know, it's a concert really of big and little. Some things are big, some things are little, depending on how important you think their relevance is to the some great wayward hairs to wayward hairs make um these sort of strands make the task of drawing hair much more um much more dangerous. There's a sense of um, unruly character in the in the hair, and you know there's a there's a method for drawing hair which is like think of them as um, individual hairs on tape. So there's like tapes of tapes of hair, right? So if you imagine these are tapes, and the tapes are made up of all of these individual hairs. That's how normally you think of hair, because it gives you some form of structure to work from. Otherwise, it's just, you know, you'd be there all day scribbling. So you need to think of there's, there's some form of um, a way of making it a little bit easier. Go easier on yourself. Relax, gay. Okay? Um, I love uh, films. I've really enjoy um watching watching films and all kinds of films i'm not uh fussy but i do like i love comedies and i do like animation and i do like horror um i i, I, I can't apologize for that I, it's just one of those things even you know, cheesy B-grade horror films. I just adore. It. I think it's fantastic. I think the whole because it's it's just imagination, really, isn't it? And that's that's what I like about it. 
So it's it's imagination, and um, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So I'm using a framing device here, which is uh, handy when you're thinking about giving it a sense of of balance or a sense of um, you know working with negative space. A negative space is a space around the object, so you're containing that within a shape. So the shape is a familiar one. Squares and rectangles is something that we we read quite uh, easily. There's a lot of little. Um, he, he, he's quite toit. <laughs> he's quite toit. He's a very muscular dude, and um, yeah, you probably don't think of him as that. But you know, I'm telling you, there's. The tendons here, the skin does not drape, doesn't sort of sag. It hasn't got a, a, moment of un, of, a moment of rest, really. It just tells me a lot about him. You know, that there's a lot of... Uh, oh, he's also got a lot of... He's a monkey man. He's very uh, hairy. Um, so, um, yeah. Some of his other films are... Um, Jumanji, which is fantastic, you know, that's, couldn't really pull that off without him, I think it gave it that, everything he does has just got that extra energy. Good Morning Vietnam was a favourite of mine, Patch Adams, most, most of these are in the, in the 90s, Mrs. Doubtfire, Dead Poets Society, Toys. Happy Feet provided a voice. Great character for that. It's really the saving grace for Happy Feet because Happy Feet is a very controversial... Um, it won an Academy Award for animation, but it's really more of an effects, uh, effect animation, effect style rather than character animation because the ping was a very realistic. Um, Flubber, which is a... Uh, that's another good film. Goodwill Hunting, which is great. Night in the Museum, which is, I think, his, that was his latest, um, the later franchise that he got involved in. He, he played Teddy Roosevelt. Again, you know, it really worked. You just believe that he's Teddy Roosevelt. It's like Popeye, you know, I'd love to see Popeye. Um, so he was this sort of pop uh, culture spinning dude in uh, Mork and Mindy. And, you know, originally from Happy Days. I haven't seen Mork and Mindy, but I remember him, his episode in Happy Days. It was like groundbreaking stuff. Let's try to throw some highlights in here. We're trying to create a sculptural form. Okay? So let's try to help it along by hitting some... Very hot spots, very highlights, reflections and things that will help with the contrast. So if we can do that, I think we're we're on we're in a we're in a happy place. So, you know, something like this gets to a point where you can't rush these. I know you, there's a tendency to do that. That's why I can't do that. Um, I, I can't do live caricatures like, you know, parties or anything like that. I, I'm just no good at that. Um, because the process itself is quite um, contemplative, you know. I'm actually thinking a lot about Robin, a lot about his work and, and also what I'm seeing here in his face. It's actually telling me a lot about him that I haven't read. You know, it's something I don't know, but I'm guessing, this is my impression by reading all of these little subtle details here. You know that he's got all of this energy, but there's a like there's a sadness here, um, and you can tell that, especially in his eyes. I think you probably 
That's probably the, um, the strongest aspect of a person reading a person or looking at a person's face and thinking of, of you know, what it is they're thinking about. So when you draw somebody, um, it, that stuff goes through your head. It's, it's a, in a way, it can be very confronting for, um, for a portrait artist. Very, very confronting. That's why I don't do portraits um, from life anymore because it's just a little bit scary to have that level of intimacy with a stranger and it, it, it just feels like intimacy. You may not agree, you may not think it like that, but it always made me a little bit uh, uncomfortable. But with working from a photograph, you know, I don't care. It, it, it's like, um, it's, it's not a big deal. Like, I can feel uncomfortable and I can feel, I don't feel uncomfortable, but I feel able to read without, incum without you know, being encumbered by somebody... Uh, you know, real, uh, face to face it's a little bit scary isn't it um, it's probably less scary with doing caricature because they're quite fast faster than uh, portraits usually but still um, it can be it can be a little bit daunting that's all I'm saying uh, other people might disagree they might think you know oh, I find it exhilarating and yada 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 well great uh, everybody's different you know I haven't um, see what I've done up here I put these horizontal lines in really quickly and I haven't really numbered them I haven't really taken into account uh, how many there should be because um, you know, not that it's such a big deal because it's all sort of impression anyway but nice to get a little bit of correct um, be nice to get a little bit correct yeah so I've got one big one here another big one here comes down and then the final one here that's it. So um, the skin reflects. You can see it's picking up on the underside of the wrinkles in the brow. The skin reflects shine because the skin has, you know, Properties. It's matte in some areas and shiny in other areas, oily in some, you know, wet in some areas like the, the lips. Um, sweat through the pores of the skin occasionally, you know. Um, so it's good to think about the tactile quality of the skin of the object that you're drawing what does it feel like is it it gives you a better I, I, I think a better response if you think about the process a little bit and the process of drawing and also the what what are you trying to achieve with a pencil you're trying to achieve a sense of wetness sense of uh, smooth skin rough skin You know, all of these things are necessary. So you're building up a tight little community here of lines. Okay, a little story, a tight little story here. Um, that's what you're building up. Now there's a beautiful high, uh, side light coming in from the left-hand side, um, which is creating a beautiful contrasting effect. 
and I want to be able to capture that. And you can see how the white pencil can really give you a, a sense of modeling here. You know, does it quite well, quite easily. Let's put a little bit of a, let's help this out a little bit over here and over here. That's good. So, um, you just keep going. You just, as I said, concentrating into the area of the face, you know, building up that, that relevance. It's up to you um, how much you render here. I like the idea of these quick um, hatch lines with a pencil because they kind of look r rough enough for, um, for a skin texture. I'm putting an artificial side light here too, just to help kick out some forms, make it more three-dimensional like an egg. So everything is, you know, attend to the details in, in relation to how they're proportioned or how they're featured in the, in the reference. So is it dark? Is it this, that area dark? Is it shiny in certain areas? Don't just presume. Don't just make it up as you go because that's turning it into a symbol. And, you know, if you don't want to do that, especially around areas of the important areas in the face, then you shouldn't. You should not um, outline things unnecessarily. Just keep them relevant to the to the reference. All right. Um, could be better. We'll get hit some black now. Now with the black, the black is there to don't outline things. Again, you know, he's got blue eyes, so you tend not to. Um, create s strong outlines around the iris. Um, again, don't think of the white of the eyes as being white. It's not. Look at the photograph. Look at the reference. Always look at it and, and determine, irrespective of what it is you're looking at, what's light and what's dark here, you know? Don't just presume that eyes have to be white. The, white, the sclera of the eye has to be white. It doesn't. And usually it's not. The white of the eye is not white. It's darker. If it wasn't, you wouldn't be able to see, it, see areas of um, reflection and shine in them. It would just be too dark. Oh, sorry, too light. So, um, what I'm building up here is contrast. Helping the contrast. It's exactly what I did with the white established a sense of contrast think about the shapes of the what are you drawing here the eye the eye has a certain shape think about that shape while you're drawing it zip back and forth to the photograph and see how that that detail um, how you can respond to that that detail from the reference and respond appropriately so don't overemphasize it if it's if it's not if it doesn't need it. Some things you can play with, um, you know, thick and thin, like around large areas, like the forehead. I'll show you what I'm doing, uh, what I'm talking about right now. So I'm going to build hair over here. And I, I am going to get to it with a white pen uh, because it's, it's, it's in the light some highlights in there that's uh, important to catch. But you can see that this thick line offers uh, a, a form of curvature to that head, which um, wasn't so pronounced before.
So again, you know, build up, keep uh, a sense of proportion and contrast always, you know, so don't just scribble things black. Don't colour everything black. Just be careful how much of one thing that you commit. You know, black is a very severe colour. Unless his hair is jet black and offer no reflections whatsoever, it's probably not a good idea to colour it black. Because it then changes the story, doesn't it? It changes the the emphasis. So, I haven't finished here. I just thought of, just saw that actually. So, again, you know, um, sometimes it's not good to outline too much um, elements. Just be careful. The pencil gives you the ability to soften and harden as you go with one implement. That's why I like this. I will come into the illustration with a brush. Um, you know, heavy with a black brush. That just sort of helps cement a lot of the um, a lot of the lines, um, making sure that they're they're dominant in the drawing. Okay, that's that's looking good. Um, this looks like I'm scribbling, but I'm actually trying to quickly cross hatch. Because cross, cross hatching gives the builds up tone, so I need that tone in part of the hair because I'm looking at the the hair. And although he has grays, gray hairs and white hairs on the temple, there is a lot of um, sharp notes, sharp hairs, which are indicative of um, the texture, so it's textural. So try not to outline too much um, if you can help it. Uh, be careful, don't outline everything. But some things you, you should outline if you want to, you know, have them stand out more. Don't just assume that they'll need an outline because there's a difference in the surface. Sometimes less is more. So a more measured approach, subtle approach would be in order. Now I'm putting a shadow under here. There is a shadow in the photograph, but I need to make sure that that is uh, following the um, direction of the light, which is predominantly from the top right-hand side. Um, actually, because of that, you can lighten these areas a little bit more of that. That would be, be fair enough, I think. So, um, muscles around the nose, around the, the lips... The forces that pull the mouth into a shape. In this case, it is a, a very thin line, so it's a lot of force. A lot of force. It's almost like a a recoil of a gun. So, or a um, the compacting of a spring. So that's what this is: the mouth, the pers the not pursing of the lips, but the drawing in of the of the mouth into a tight line um, about to explode into you know a series of funny um, funny lines funny observations so as I said, don't outline everything. Just think of their importance, their relative importance, 
in the story. And sometimes uh, some things, it's, you know, it's important to th- have that sense of proportion. I'm outlining the cheeks because it's a broad shape. And I think it adds to the, the curvature, the roundness of the shape that I'm trying to get. It helps. Um, this is the theory between thick and thin lines. So when you build up a thicker line, not overall, but in a certain area, it actually gives a a very strong feeling of curvature, of form. Right? So it's not as perhaps as strong as actually drawing in a shadow like that. But it still gives you that, that. It's a high contrast version of this. So thick and thin gives a, a, a feeling of, of curvature around something. It also gives you a feeling of um, the, the opposite side of the light. So, And um, contrast between shapes, between surfaces and forms. So it serves a a number of uh, purposes. There's a lot of... um, I think there's a lot of subtlety here. Um, I kind of went off... I went off the, the thumbnail sketch a little bit. And then I brought it back in. And I think with the, the area that I was able to rescue it, to rescue this likeness, was because of the relationships I'm building between these forms. The eyes, the nose and the mouth inside this imaginary mask area, this T-zone. Okay, so it's, it's, it's not really there, but I'm calling it there because that's my area of focus. And I think you'll have a lot of um, enjoyment, focusing attention in uh, any kind of illustration, but in caricature, of course, I think um, I think this helps an enormous amount. Um, I'm going to get a black pen. I'm going to let's see what we're going to do. We'll use this one. This is a flexible black pen, black brush. So I'm just going to outline some of the black areas, help them along a little bit. Um, Just here and there. There and here. I'm actually going to color in the um, shirt because in the photograph it's actually quite a nice, it's got a nice uh, effect of contrasting the the skin tones and I'm kind of um, creating a sense of skin tones with uh, with the drawing because you know the, the the method of using three color pencils on a toned background toned paper paper doesn't have to be gray it could be it's good to have a neutral color um, but it can be like a tan color as well you could use that Um, so yeah the um, the three color pencils uh, afford a a certain uh, level of warmth to the underdrawing the base drawing of the figure you know which is really cool sorry I'm trying to get pigment down to the brush tip Um, which is really cool right because it's approximates the skin tone so you know that you can offer like red tones to the skin to the lips to the cheeks etc and it gives it a sense of um, of relevance to the subject which is you know warm skin 
skin is warm to the touch, you know. Now there is something I'm missing over on here which is the highlights. So I want to try to grab some of those on the side. A little bit of help would be in order over here and of course on this side as well. There, it's. Uh, I might actually uh, put in a little bit of lighting there, uh, maybe a little bit over here as well, just a touch, just a little bit. And um, I want to punch out the skin, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a thicker Posca marker. This is a paint pen. It's, it's got a little metal ball in it, so. You shake it up. Oops, it's too thin an area to try to get into there with that big brush. Um, I just want to bring out the shape of the kidney bean, the uh, caricature, just the face a little bit more from the background, and also to have a, a, a feeling of, you know, definite uh, shape to the negative space. So let's just, could probably just use this. So the pen doesn't work, doesn't uh, mix with the pencil, doesn't smudge the pencil very much. So um, I had a good chance of uh, keeping the paint marker white rather than mixing with the terracotta pencils around there so that would make it turn um, pink so we don't want to do that it would be fairly nice and crisp as much as we can you'll notice I'm right handed not left handed so I'm actually working against the against the tide um, so something bad will inevitably happen which means I will tend to smudge the, um, the, the drawing the further I go up the uh, to the top left of the page so what I usually do I balance on my knuckle of my small finger and and just sort of look like an idiot painting <laughs> the uh, top left hand corner sometimes they get a white spot on the knuckle it's better than all over the palm of your hand so yeah I, I think I said uh, before my favorite film of of his is Mrs. Doubtfire and it just because you know the level that the character goes to to get spend time with his kids um, resonates with me as a father. It's like you do anything to, you know, have that time with your kids. And um, you could tell that that role meant a lot to him um, personally. You know, it's, it's sort of a... You could tell from the performance. It's just very... It seemed very... It seemed very personal. It seemed very, um, very, very strong. Kudos to the director, actually, to stand back and allow that relationship to build with the viewer and the and uh, Robin Williams because it's kind of crucial. In many ways, it's like the Aladdin. You know, Aladdin came alive with uh, Robin's voice and they they actually started a trend in using voice actors to sell the, the film because his performance just it, it just cemented it it just added so much value 
to the to the cartoon. It was a beautiful cartoon. You know, I mean, stylistically, it was it was uh, it was really genius. You know, it was uh, using Hirschfeld's um, linear style almost, and the analysis of that in the in the animation was a, a, a masterstroke. And the genie was a genie kind of looked like him as well, which was weird. Um, you can tell the sensitivity and the energy impact this there's not a lot of wrinkles here this it's just basically um, um, muscles so there's a lot of mus muscle a very muscular face very very interesting man indeed. Okay. Right. I think I don't think I can do any more really. I've, I'm happy with that uh that face. Um this is Robin Williams, and you know uh, we miss him. And uh, um, check out his films if you're feeling uh, nostalgic. Um, have a look at them. Certainly, Aladdin and uh, um, you know Mrs. Doubtfire would be uh, a good uh, investment for the um, for the period. Um, this is Franz Cantor, and um, I will catch you. Um, on the flip side. Bye.